Bienvenidos amigos, estamos acá presentes en este espacio que se llama Sunshine Lab, el espacio que ayuda a las personas a vivir vidas más poderosas. Welcome everybody, we're here in Sunshine Lab, the space where you know how to live a powerful life. And here today we have a very special guest, his name is Mike Saunders. Mike Saunders is the Vice President of Innovation for Nature Sunshine. Mike, how are you? I'm doing very well, thank you, Sol. We're very happy to be here, very excited about your presence here because I know that throughout Nature Sunshine in 40 countries, you get to visit many, many countries and we were together in Mexico and now in Bogota and you are an expert in metabolism. Tell us, can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing here in, in the role of talking about metabolism? So when we're talking about metabolism, what we mean is metabolic health. And if you look at metabolic health, um, it's the biggest concern in, in the world right now as far as chronic health conditions. Um, things like heart disease, diabetes, uh, obesity, all of these are tied to metabolic health. And it's so easy to help ourselves. Met metabolic health is one of those things that's entirely within our control. It's, it's very easy for us to change our lifestyle and improve our metabolic health. But unfortunately, most of us just don't know how to do it. What is the right way to do it? Can you tell us, you know, what, what is the right way to do it? We were talking earlier about gut health. Um, and I want to start with gut health because metabolic health, the first, I guess I need to define metabolic health a little bit. Yes. It's more than just, you know, eating and digesting food or building and breaking down molecules. Um, when I think about metabolic health, I want to think about what's happening Um, in terms of how my body metabolizes glucose, how my body reacts to the lipids that I eat, how my body stores uh, the energy from food, how my body utilizes the energy from food. This is all about metabolic health. And a lot of this really starts out in the gut. It starts out with what I'm eating. It starts out with how my body processes what I'm eating. And interestingly, a, a lot of it starts out with microbiome. Microbiome, this is something that We have been very hearing in my mainstream media. You know, there are many people who are talking about, you know, what is the importance of gut health. Why is this new? Because, you know, this is something that Nature Sunshine has been in, how many years has Nature Sunshine known and worked around biome? Uh, so, Nature Sunshine has been a gut health focused company for, for over 50 years now. Wow. Um, microbiome, has been something that it started showing up in the literature, in scientific literature. People were doing studies on it maybe 25, 30 years ago, and people didn't really think it was all that important. The, the scientists that studied it, they were the weirdos that wanted to go look around in people's feces and see what lives there, you know? And what they started to, to find was that the bacteria that colonize our gut in particular Uh, play a really, really critical role in, in human health. And it's, it started to redefine really what it means to be human because we have so many different species of bacteria in our gut, so many different uh, types of genes that are being expressed, different chemical reactions. The bacteria help us break down our food. They create metabolites that our body needs to uh, be healthy. But for the last 40 plus years, we've been trying our best to live a sterile life. We've been making sure that our kids wash their hands all the time, using uh, the hand sanitizer all the time, trying to protect ourselves from disease. But at the same time, we've been wiping out our, our microbiome. We've been uh, deleting the, the, the diversity within our microbiome. The different types of bacteria that should be there aren't there anymore. And it's had a major impact on things like allergies, asthma, even things like autism, uh, obesity, weight gain. All of these are really related to the types of bacteria that are in our gut and how we process the food because of those bacteria. So wait, so that, could, that would be like, for instance, you're trying to protect yourself from diseases, but you're actually depleting what would make you powerful. Let's say like you're, if you make your gut in health powerful, then it means that you could become stronger. Instead of protecting, you would be like, strengthening your ability to deal with external circumstances or even things that you are eating that contain toxins? It's ironic, but in our efforts to protect ourselves from disease, 
we've actually created some additional problems. And I'm not saying antibiotics are always bad. They're critically important sometimes. You need to get rid of infection sometimes. But what I'm saying is we have kind of gone too far. Um, if you look at things like when a baby is born, um, looking at vaginal birth versus cesarean, babies with that are born vaginally have uh, a more healthy microbiome because they're exposed to bacteria from the mother's vagina early on in their life. Uh, babies that are breastfed because of the exposure to bacteria um, have a healthier microbiome than babies who are fed with formula. Um, children that grow up on farms actually have a healthier microbiome than children that grow up in the suburbs because they're exposed to more bacteria, they're exposed to animals, things like that. Um, so being exposed to lots of different types of bacteria helps our microbiome become diverse and become healthy. And it also helps build up our immune system so that our immune system is better at fighting off different pathogens on its own without having to resort to uh, all the different antibi antibiotic type things that we have. Right, and, and I think that for us in Latin America and in general in many countries, uh, we have a big problem, a big metabolic problem because let's say in, in many countries, uh, the statistics, for example, here in Colombia, the statistics of pre-diabetes is one in 10. Yeah. In Mexico, the statistics about diabetes is one in six. So this is a, this is a problem that, you know, together with the number one cause of, of, of death in the world, which is cardiovascular disease, is something, is this something that we can prevent? How can we help our bodies improve their metabolic health? And what role does our product, PowerBeat, can play into the solution to a preventive life that could help us deal with this epidemic of, of death and things that, you know, that it's, it's hard for people. Because you know everyone, like you know a person who has diabetes or you know, you know people that are suffering from this. And this is a complicated question. It goes into, I mean, yes, microbiome is part of the problem, but another factor that, that actually has plays a role in, in our microbiome health, um, but also in our ability to process food properly, is the way that we've changed our food source. If we wanted to eat, we used to eat whole foods. We used to have to prepare food. Um, we used to have to uh, harvest vegetables, cut them up, cook them, eat them. Now we go to the store, we buy processed food. Um, we buy things that pretty much all of the fiber has been stripped out of. Most of the nutrient composition has been changed from the original food and rebuilt into something that tastes good, but really isn't healthy for my body. Um, we overconsume things like sugar and we drastically underconsume fiber. And this plays a huge role in our metabolic health and how our body is able to process sugar. This is a big reason why uh, Mexico, one in six people have diabetes. It's because the North American diet, the, the US diet has gone into Mexico and their bodies are not able to adapt to it in Mexico. They're consuming this processed food and it's literally uh, damaging them. It's, 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 their body has no ability to process all of these carbohydrates in the absence of fiber and they're not getting the fiber that they need to keep their microbiome healthy. And so it's this double-edged sword that is causing disease at a very high rate. Um, there's a lot of things that can be done to start helping these types of problems, uh, whether it be Colombia, whether it be Mexico, India is another major problem. Africa, diabetes is growing uh, over 100%. Um, so huge growth in diabetes all around the world, especially in places that are getting introduced to processed food for the first time. Very cheap, right? Not yeah. Cheap food. Cheap processed food. They have salt, the sugar, and reactions that generate a sort of addiction to, to salt and sugar. Yes. For it. And if we can help people to be able to respond to sugars in a healthy way, help people to respond to carbohydrates in a healthy way, so that they don't have this insulin resistance begin to build up in their system, then we can go a long way towards helping these problems. One of the things that you can do right off the bat is increase fiber intake. Fiber is critically important for our body's ability to metabolize glucose in a healthy way. Fiber is also critically important for feeding bacteria in our microbiome that help us process glucose in a healthy way. So Power Beats is, yes, it's a blood flow product, but it's also a product that contains a significant amount of dietary fiber, almost 
two grams of dietary fiber from both the beetroot and added fiber uh, in the form of uh, FOS, which is a prebiotic fiber that helps feed the healthy bacteria in my gut. So yes, I'm getting blood flow enhancement. I'm getting improved metabolic health from this product, um, but I'm also getting specific fiber increase in my diet that's allowing the microbiome to grow better. And it's also helping me metabolize glucose in a healthier way if I take it with a meal. Right, so it's fiber and the beet, because I, I really like to understand sometimes, you know, what's behind, you know, the word power. You already, you know, told us how it helps, you know, with the blood flow, and the blood flow is basically power for your body, right? Mm -hmm. So, but what about the beets? What is the, you know, what is that? Why is the beets the main ingredient? And, you know, are they, are there studies about the effects of beets in, in, in bodies of people? There are many studies on beets beetroot powder, beetroot juice powder, beetroot juice extracts, and they all really focus on nitric oxide. Um, they focus on the nitrate content of the beet that gets converted into nitric oxide in the body, and that's what enhances blood flow. Most companies go cheap when it comes to beets, and this is a shame. Uh, it's very analogous to saying, my orange juice has a lot of vitamin C, so it's healthy. It's not necessarily the case. Yes, orange juice has vitamin C, Vitamin C is healthy. Uh, beet juice extract or beet juice powders, they have nitric or they have nitrates. Nitrates are healthy because it converts to nitric oxide. But when I go away from that whole fruit, that whole orange to the, to the juice, I'm losing the fiber. I'm losing all of the things in that orange that helps my body process those natural sugars in a healthy way. And instead of getting a healthy response to real food, I get a blood sugar spike. I get an insulin spike. The same thing is gonna happen with beets. If I have a whole beet that's high in nit uh, dietary nitrates, then the experience that my body has to that product is entirely different than a beet juice powder or a beet juice extract that's, it has the nitrates, but it has also all the sugar, all the water solubles that my body's gonna struggle to deal with without the fiber from the beet. So again, whole beet powder is, is critically important. And that's really the reason why we spent so much time and effort finding the right beet powder for this product and not just taking a simple extract we could have gotten from anywhere. Yeah, so where do we get the, the beet extract from? We get this beet extract from the Himalayan mountains. And wow. the reason we get it from the Himalayan mountains is because when you grow a plant under strenuous conditions, it changes the phytonutrient profile of the plant. And this is something that is seen throughout uh, herbalism, basically. Uh, there, there are ingredients that you can find. Uh, there's a red snow algae that is an algae that, you know, grows up uh, uh, um, in the Arctic. Um, and because of the exposure to UV light, because of the exposure to extremes, it has a very, very high concentration of phytonutrients. And it has some significant benefit for skin health because of that, protects the skin. Now, these beets are the same, same concept because they're grown at high elevation, because they're grown exposed to extremes as far as UV radiation and extremes as far as temperature, the beetroot has to protect itself. It does that with phytonutrients. So you get increased levels of, of, of dietary nitrates, but you also get increased levels of various different polyphenols, uh, flavonoids, things like that, that are also healthy for my body. And then you're still getting the fiber and all the other benefits that are not water soluble um, that you get from eating the whole bean that you wouldn't get from the juice. Wow, Mike, this is all so interesting. I think that we are with the capacity to share this message, right? We have the information about what the product could do. And I know that you have been traveling from Poland to the U.S. just recently, yeah, right? Just yeah, just recently. And this has been a hit all over the world. And it's now here in Mexico and Latin America. We're so happy that you're here with us today. We hope we can talk more about some of our other it ways, you know, that we have examined throughout 50 years on how to build more powerful lives. So thank you for this time. Thank you for being here. Gracias amigos por estar acá. Un abrazo a todos. Gracias por participar este día. Adiós.